Dr. Earl, why, why don't people understand the relationship between the ocean and the planet? What, what do you attribute that huge gap to? How can such a huge percentage of the Earth's surface be something that just is not part of public consciousness? It's the great mystery of the sea. <laughs> uh, I had occasion to ask that very question to Claire Booth Luce once, and she looked skyward and she said, well, looking at the big puffy clouds, heaven is there and you know what's in the other direction. <laughs> Whatever the reason, uh, because perhaps we are terrestrial by nature and only in fairly recent times have human beings acquired access to the sea, effective access to the sea, but we're still beginning. Scuba divers go down maybe 100 feet, 150 feet perhaps, if they push the edge a bit. But we're still exploring the ocean. Less than 5% of the sea has been seen at all, let alone explored. And because of our attitude that the ocean is a place to throw things away, or it's a place just to, what well, you think of fish, fish are to eat, right? Without thinking that fish are to the sea as birds are to the land. There are components of our life support system. They are, as, as uh, has been said about components of the land, the nuts, the bolts, the cogs, the wheels that, that make the ocean work. And it's not just the fish, it's all of the diversity of life in the sea. We need to respect fish alive, not just fish dead. And coral reefs alive, not just ornaments for your shelf. We need to think about the ocean with a new attitude. And it is happening, but it needs to happen faster than it presently is. Um which organisms, uh, which ecosystems are most vulnerable right now to this acceleration of climate change? I can answer a bit, but we all can weigh in. Uh, <clears throat> the acidification is, is comprehensive in its impact. We can look at coral reefs because we're familiar with them. We don't see the tiny creatures, the coccolithophorids, the foraminifera, the little calcareous shelled creatures that make up much of the life in the sea and that drive much of the ocean chemistry. But we better pay attention and it is important <laughs> with every breath we take it's important to understand this and it's not rocket science as they say this is <laughs> this is ocean science which is really a lot of fun as well as really important. Dr. Lubchenko. Mr. Chairman, I believe that Sylvia has given an answer that I would agree with. Um, relative to warming, certainly uh, those communities, those ecosystems that are in the tropics and those at the poles uh, are, appear to be most vulnerable, uh, but every community is vulnerable to the increased acidity of oceans. And that is going to be um, one of the biggest challenges facing all of us because uh, of, of its consequences at all different levels from the microscopic plants, uh, through the filter feeders, to the herbivores, predators, on up the food web, uh, anything with a shell or a skeleton. And so crabs, lobsters, sea stars, urchins, uh, microscopic plants, mussels, oysters, snails, all of those are going to be affected by this acidification. And those critters are everywhere.